Thanks for your interest in international tax course videos. If you like to purchase the entire course, click the link in the description. If you're watching this on mobile, you can click the downward arrow here and it will show you the link to purchase the entire course. So what are the contents of a tax treaty? How is a tax treaty basically structured? So generally in a treaty, you would find three broad parts. The first one deals with the scope of the treaty. What this means is, who are the person who shall be covered under the treaty? The purpose of this clause is that, you know, it is not that everyone can go and claim benefit under a treaty. It is only a certain specified set of people who are entitled to claim the benefit under a given treaty. So let's say if you have an India-Mauritius treaty, it is not that a person who is a tax resident of US can claim a benefit under this treaty, right? So the scope deals with who are the people, who are the person who shall be covered under a treaty. Second is, what are the taxes to which this treaty shall apply? Normally a treaty is applicable to income taxes or taxes which are similar to income taxes, right? Which means that something like a VAT or a sales tax, etc. are not covered under the treaty. The second part is, once you've decided which all people are covered, what are the taxes to be levied, what are the taxing rights of contracting states? So does India has a right to tax a particular payment or not? If it has a right to tax a particular payment, then how much taxes are to be applied, right? Whether the right to tax is exclusive or it is non-exclusive. Exclusive could be in a situation where India levies full rate of tax on a particular income. Non-exclusive could be something like, you know, royalty and FTS, where India levies a 10% withholding tax, right? And the balance is paid by the foreign company in the country of its residence. Then there is elimination of double taxation. So if India applies this 10%, how does the foreign company get a credit of this taxation in its home country? Third is facilitating implementation of the treaty, right? So once the treaty is formed, you've identified who all are covered, you've determined how much of taxes is to be levied, what if someone escapes it and does not want to pay up taxes? The question of treaty implementation may come in those cases, right? To facilitate that, normally there's a clause on exchange of information between the two countries, whereby information relating to a particular person may be shared between the two contracting states. And there is mutual agreement procedure. So if a treaty between India and some foreign country is entered into and both of them after few years of treaty entering think that a particular treatment should be done which is contrary to their respective beliefs then they may get into a mutual agreement procedure whereby they may agree on a particular interpretation of the treaty to resolve disputes.